Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming along to Gaslight um, by Patrick Hamilton and presented for you by Sandgate Theatre. My name is Catherine Radbourne and I am the director for the show. Um, this is just a little bit of a public service announcement. Announcement. Please make sure that your mobile phone is either switched to silent, uh, do not disturb, or switched off, please. Um, also, there will be a 20 minute intermission and tea, coffee, hot chocolate and raffle tickets will be available at the back of the computer. Uh, we hope that you enjoy Gaslight. Thank you very much. Thank you. What are you doing, Bella? Nothing, dear. Don't wake yourself. What are you doing, Bella? Come here. Only for tea, my dear. Muffins. For tea. Muffins, eh? Yes, dear. He only comes so seldom. I thought I might surprise you. Why are you so apprehensive, Bella? I wasn't about to reproach you. No, dear. I know you weren't. This fire's an ash. Bring the bell wheat people, dear. Yes. Is it merely to put coal on, my dear? I can do that. Now, my dear, we've had this out before. Be so good as to ring the bell. But, dear, Lizzie's out in the street. Let me do it. I can do it oh, so easily. No, no, no. Where's the girl? Get the girl up at Lizzie's house. But dear... Go and ring the bell, please, Bella. There's a good child. What do you suppose servants are for? Go on, my dear, answer. What do you suppose servants are for? To serve us, I suppose, Jack. Precisely, then why... I just think we should consider them a little. <laughs> that, that's all. Consider them? There's your extraordinary confusion of the mind again. You speak as though they've worked for no consideration. I happen to consider Elizabeth to the tune of 16 pounds per annum, and the girl 10. 26 pounds a year all told. If that is not consideration of the most acute and lively kind, I would like to know what is. Yes, Jack, I expect you are right. <laughs> I have no doubt of that, my dear. She would mind us to think otherwise. What's the weather doing? Is it still as yellow? Yes, it seems to be denser than ever. Shall we be going out in this jack, dear? Oh, I suppose so, unless it gets very much worse after tea. Come in. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought the bell rang. Yes, we rang the bell, Nancy. Go on, my dear. Tell her why we rang the bell. Oh. Yes. We'd like some coal on the fire, Nancy. Please. We might as well turn this gas up, Nancy. The darkness in the afternoon is getting beyond the injury. Yes, sir. You're looking very impudent and pretty tonight, Nancy. Do you know that? I don't know that at all, sir. I'm sure. 
What is it? Another broken heart added to your list. I wasn't aware of breaking any hearts, sir. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. And this complexion of yours, that's not true either. I wonder what mysterious lotions you've been using to enhance your natural beauty. I'm quite natural, sir. I promise you. You do it adroitly, I grant you that. Would you tell us the name of your chemist? Perhaps you could pass it on to Mrs. Manningham and help banish her pallor. She'd be most grateful, I'm sure. I'd be most happy to, I'm sure, sir. Or are women too jealous of their discoveries to pass them on to a rival? I don't know, sir. Is that all you want, sir? Yes, that's all I want now. Except my tea. I'll be coming directly. Jack, how can you treat me like that? But my dear, you're the mistress of the house. It was your job to tell her to put the coal on. It isn't that. It's humiliating me like that. As though I'd do anything to my face. And ask for her assistance if I did. You seem to look upon servants as our natural equals. So I treated her as one. Besides, I was only trifling with her. It's strange that you can't see how you hurt me. That girl laughs at me enough already. Laughs at you? What an idea. What makes you think she laughs at you? Oh, I know she does in secret. In fact, she does so openly. More openly every day. But my dear, if she does that, doesn't the fog fly with you? Do you mean I am a laughable person? I didn't mean anything. It's you who reads meaning to everything, Bella, dear. I wish you weren't such a perfect little silly. Come here and stop it. I've just thought of something rather nice. Something nice? What have you thought of, Jack? I shan't tell you until you come here. What is it, Jack? What have you thought of? I've just read that Mr. McNaughton, the celebrated actor, is in London for another season. Yes, I read that. What of it, Jack? What of it? What do you suppose? <laughs> well, Jack, do you mean it? Would you take me to see McNaughton? You wouldn't take me to see McNaughton, would you? Not only would I take you to see McNaughton, my dear, I'm going to take you to see McNaughton. That is, if you want to go. Oh, what heaven! What heaven! When would you like to go? You only have three weeks, according to his version. Oh, what perfect heaven! Let me see. Do let me see. There, you see, you can either see him in a comedy or a tragedy according to your choice. What would you prefer, the comedy or the tragedy? Oh, either would be equally wonderful. Which would you choose, if you were me? Well, it depends, doesn't it, whether you want to laugh or whether you want to cry. Well, I want to laugh, but then I should like to cry too. In fact, I should like to do both. Oh, Jack, what made you decide to take me? Well, my dear, you've been very good lately, and I thought it would be well to take you out of yourself. Oh, Jack, you've been so much kinder to me lately. Is it possible you're beginning to see my point of view? I don't know if I ever did this from that, did I, Bella? No, no, dear, no. It's true. It's true. All I need is to be taken out of myself. Some little changes to have some attention from you. Oh, Jack, I'd be better. I could really try to be better. You know in what way. If, if I could just get out of myself a little more. How do you mean, my dear? Exactly better. <clears throat> you know. You know in what way, Jack. About all that's happened lately. We said we wouldn't speak about it. Oh, no. Let's not speak about that. No, I don't want to. But what I say is so important. I have been better, even in the last week. Haven't you noticed it? And why is it? <clears throat> because you have stayed in and given me your time. The other night, Jack, when you stayed and we played cards together, it was like the old days. And I went to bed that night feeling a normal, happy, healthy human being. And then the night after, Jack, when you read your book to me and we sat by the fire, I felt all my love for you coming back then, Jack. And I slept that night like a child. All those ghastly dreads and terrible, terrible fears. 
They seemed to have vanished. And all because you had given me your time and kept me from brooding on myself in this house all day and night. <clears throat> yes, I wonder if it's that. Uh, merely your medicine is finally beginning to benefit you. It's not my medicine, Jack. I have taken my medicine religiously. Haven't I taken it religiously? Much as I detest it. It's more than medicine that I want. It is the medicine of a sweet, sane mind, of being interested in something. Don't you see what I mean? Well, we really are talking about gloomy subjects, aren't we? Yes, dear, I, I don't want to be gloomy. That's the last thing I want to be. I only want you to understand. Say that you understand. Don't I seem to, Bella? Haven't I just said I'm taking you to the theatre? Oh, yes. Yes, you have. And you've made me so happy, dear. So happy. Well, which is it to be? The comedy or the tragedy? You must make up your mind. Oh, Jack. Which shall it be? Which shall it be? <laughs> it matters so little. Do you understand that, my husband? I'm going to the bed. Come in. No, Nancy. I think we'll have it on the table today. Just as you wish, madam. Tell me, Nancy, if you were being taken to the play and had to choose between comedy and a tragedy, which would you choose? Me, madam? Oh, I'd go for the comedy all the time. Would you? Why would you choose comedy, Nancy? I like to laugh, madam, I suppose. Do you? Well, I dare say you're right. I just have to bear it in mind. <coughs> Mr. Bannigan's taking me next week, you see. Oh, yes. I hope you enjoy it. I'll bring the muffins directly. <laughs> My dear, what are you doing? <laughs> the little beast. Let her put that in her pipe and smoke it. <laughs> what has she done? You don't know her. She tries to torment and score off me all day long. You don't see these things. A man wouldn't. She thinks me a poor thing. And now she can suffer the news that you're taking me to the theatre. I think you imagine things, my dear. Oh, no, I don't. We've been too familiar with her. Now, come along, my dear. You sit one side and I the other, like two children in the nest. <coughs> You're wonderfully pleased with yourself. I should take you to the theatre more often if that is to be the result. Oh, Jack, I wish you could. I don't see why we shouldn't. I used to like nothing more when I was a boy. <laughs> in fact, you may hardly believe it, but I even had the ambition to be an actor myself at one time. I can well believe it. Come along to your tea now. You know, Bella, it must be a very superb sensation to lose yourself entirely in the character of somebody else. I flatter myself I would have made an actor. Oh, of course, dear. You were cut out for it. Anyone can see that. No. Do you think so? Seriously? I've often had a faint tinge of regret. Of course, one would have required training, but I do believe I would have made it back. Might have even reached the top of the tree for all I know. To be or not to be, that is the question. Where there is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of our greatest fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing and them. <laughs> oh, you see how fine your voice is. You've made a terrible mistake. I wonder. Then, if you'd been a famous actor, I should have had a free seat to come and watch you every night of my mouth, and then called you at the stage door afterwards. Wouldn't that have been paradise? A paradise of which you would have soon tired, my dear. I have no doubt that after a couple of nights, you'd be staying at home as you do now. Oh, no, I wouldn't. I should have to keep my eye on you for all the hussies that would be after you. <laughs> there would be hussies after me. That's an added inducement, then. <laughs> oh, I know it, you wretch. But you wouldn't escape me. Oh, these look delicious. Aren't you glad I thought of them? Here's some salt. You'll want plenty of it. You'll have to forgive me chattering on like this, Jack, but I'm just feeling so happy. I can see that, my dear. I'm being taken to the play, you see. I used to adore these as a child, didn't you? I wonder how 
long it's been since we had them. We haven't had them since we've been married, at any rate. Who have we? Have we? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm sure. What is it? <clears throat> What's wrong? What is it now? I have no desire to upset you, Bella, but I've just noticed something very much amiss. If you'll please rectify it at once, while I'm not looking, I will forget the matter. Amiss? What's amiss? For God's sake, don't turn your back on me. What has happened? You know perfectly well what has happened, Bella. If you'll rectify it at once, I'll say no more about it. I don't know. I don't know. You've left your teeth. Tell me. Tell me what it is. Were you trying to make me a fool, Bella? What I refer to is on the wall behind you. If you will put it back, that will be the end. The wall behind me? What? Yes. The picture has been taken down. Yes. The picture. Who has taken it down? Why has it been taken down? Why indeed? Why has it been taken down? You alone can answer that, Bella. Why was it taken down before? If you will please take it from wherever you've hidden it and put it back on the wall again. But I haven't hidden it, Jack. I didn't do it. For God's sake, look at me. I didn't do it. I don't know where it is. Someone else must have done it. Someone else? Are you suggesting I would play such a fantastic and wicked trick? No, no, dear, no. But, but someone else. Before God, I didn't do it. Someone else. Dear, someone else. Someone else, eh? Someone else. Will you leave go of me? You repel me, you half-witted thing. We'll soon see about somebody else. But Jack, don't ring that bell. Don't ring it. Don't call the servants in to witness my shame. It is not my shame, for I haven't done it, but don't call the servants in. Jack, tell them not to come. Let us talk about this between ourselves. Just don't have that go of me, please. Will you leave go of me and sit down there? We'll soon see about somebody else. You had better pull yourself together, hadn't you? Ah, Elizabeth, do you notice anything amiss in this room? Look carefully around the walls and tell me if you notice anything amiss. Well, Elizabeth, what do you notice? Nothing, sir, except the picture has been taken down, sir. Yes, the picture has been taken down. You noticed it at once. Was that picture in its place when you dusted the room this morning? Yes, sir. It was, sir. I don't understand, sir. Neither do I, Elizabeth. Neither do I. Now, just one question before you go. Was it you who removed that picture, or was it not? No, sir. Of course I didn't, sir. You did not. And have you? at any time taking that picture down to its proper place? No, sir. Never, sir. Why should no, I, sir? Very good. Now we've kissed that Bible line on the desk there as a token of your truthfulness. <laughs> Very good. You may go. Please send Nancy in here at once. Yes, sir. I'll say that I did it. I did it, Jack. I did it. Just don't have that girl in dark. Will you have the goodness to contain yourself? Come in. Yes, sir. Do you want me? Yes, Nancy, I do want you. If you look on the wall on your left, you'll see a picture is gone. Why? My word. So it has. What a rum go. I did not ask for any comment on your part, Nancy. Be to be less intimate and answer what I ask you. Was it you who removed that picture, or was it not? Me? What should I want to move it for, sir? Very good. Now we kiss the Bible line, there's a solemn oath you did not, and you may go. Willingly, sir. If I had done it, I would have probably... That is all, Nancy, you may go. <laughs> 
there. We have now determined completely. Give me that Bible. Give it to me. Let me kiss it too. There. There, do you see? Do you see that I kiss it? Be careful what you do. Would you wish me sacrilege above all else? It is no sacrilege, Jack. Someone else has committed sacrilege. Now see, I swear before God Almighty that I never touched that picture. There. Then by God you are mad. You don't know what you do. You unhappy wretch. You stark, gibbering mad like a wretched mother before you. Jack, you promised you would never say that again. The time has come to face facts, Bella. If this continues, you will not be under my protection much longer. Jack, I'm going to make a last appeal to you. I'm going to make a last appeal. I'm desperate, Jack. Can't you see that I am desperate? You can't see it. You must have a heart of stone. Go on. What do you wish to say? Jack, I may be going mad, like my poor mother. But if I am mad, I must be treated gently. Jack, before God, I never lie to you knowingly. If I have taken down that picture, I have not known it. I have not known it. And if I have taken it down on those other occasions, I have not known it then either. Jack, if, <clears throat> if I steal your things, your, your rings, your pencils and your handkerchiefs, and you find them later at the bottom of my box, as indeed you do, then I do not know that I have done it. Jack, if I commit these fantastic, meaningless mysteries, so meaningless, why should I take a picture down from its place? Jack, if I do these things, I am certainly going off my head. And I must be treated kindly and gently so that I may get well. You must bear with me, Jack, bear with me. Not storm and rage. God knows that I'm trying, Jack, I'm trying. For God's sake, believe that I'm trying and be kind to me. Bella, my dear. Have you any idea where that picture is now? Oh, yes. Suppose it is behind the cupboard. Will you please go and see? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's here. Then you did know where it was, Bella. Then you did know where it was. No. No, I, I only supposed it was. I only supposed it was because it was found there before. It was found there twice before. I, I didn't know, you see, I, I didn't. There's no point walking around the room with a picture in your hand. Go and put it back in its proper place. Exactly what we've got to do. I'm not going to say anything at the moment for my feelings are running too high. In fact, I'm going out immediately. And I suggest you go to your room and lie down in the dark for a while. No, no, not my room. For God's sake, don't send me to my room. There's no question of sending me to your room, Bella. You know perfectly well that you can do exactly as you please. Here now. Take my hands. Come sit down. There you are. Follow me. Now, where are your salts? Ah, here they are. <clears throat> now, I'm going to leave you in peace. Jack, must you go? Must you always leave me alone after these dreadful scenes? No arguments, please, Bella. I had to go after tea anyway. I'm just leaving a little earlier, that's all. Now, is there anything else I can get you? No, Jack. You, you go. Very good. Oh, I'll be passing that grocer, and I might as well pay that bill of his. Where is it, my dear? I gave it to you, didn't I? Yes, I put it on the desk. 
Don't move, my dear, I can find it. I'll be glad to get this thing off my chest. Where is it, my dear, in one of the drawers? No, I, I put it on top. <clears throat> right, my dear, don't worry, we'll find it. Are you sure it's here? There's nothing but writing paper. Jack, I'm quite sure it is there. Don't you worry. Look it's of no importance, we'll find it. No, it's not here, it must be in one of the drawers. It's not in one of the drawers. I put it here on top. You're not going to tell me this is gone, are you? My dear, calm yourself, calm yourself. My now God. you're going to say I've hidden this. What new trick is this you play upon me? It was there this afternoon. I put it there myself. This is a plot. This is a filthy plot. You're all against me. It's a plot. Will you control yourself? Will you control yourself? You listen to me, madam. If you utter another sound, I will knock you down and take you to your room and lock you in the darkness for a week. I've been too lenient with you, and I mean to alter my tactics. Oh, God, help me. <laughs> May God help you indeed. Now you listen to me. I'm going to leave you until 10 o'clock. In that time you will recover that paper and admit to me that you've lyingly and purposely concealed it. If not, you are to take the consequences. You are going to see a doctor, madam. More than one. They'll determine what this means. Oh, just be patient with me. If I am mad, be patient with me. I have been patient with you and control myself long enough. It is now time for you to control yourself or take the consequences. Think upon that, Bella. Jack, don't go. Please, Jack. You're still going to take me to the theatre, aren't you? <laughs> what a question to ask me at such time. No, madam. Emphatically, I'm not. If you play fair by me, I'll play fair by you. If we are going to be enemies, you and I, you will soon see that it is I who will get the best of it. Good evening, Mrs. Manningham, I believe. How are you, Mrs. Manningham? How do you do? I I'm very 
much afraid that... You're very much afraid you don't know me from Adam. That's about the root of the matter, isn't it? No, it isn't that. But no doubt you've come to see my husband. Oh no, you couldn't be further out. On the contrary, I chose this precise moment to call when I knew your husband was out. May I hang up my things and sit down? Why, well, yes, I, I suppose you may. You're a good deal younger and more attractive than I thought, you know. <laughs> but you are looking very pale. Have you been crying? Really? I'm afraid I don't understand at all. Well, you will do so, madam, very shortly. You're the lady who's going off your head, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what made you say that? Who are you? What have you come to talk about? Well, of one thing you can be certain, I've not come to talk about the weather. Though that indeed merits a world of comment at the moment. But you are running away with me, Mr Mangum, and asking me a good deal I can't answer at once. Instead of that, I'm going to ask you a question or two. Now please, will you come here and hold my hands? Thank you. Now, Mrs Manningham, I want you to take a good look at me and see if you're not looking at someone to whom you can give your trust. I am a perfect stranger to you, and you can read little in my face besides that. But I can read a great deal in yours. What? What can you read in mine? Oh, madam, I can read the tokens of one who has travelled a very long way on the path of sorrow and doubt, will have, I fear, to travel a little further before she comes to the end. But I fancy she is coming towards the end for all that. Come now. Are you going to trust me? And listen, I'm old enough to be your father. Who are you? God knows I need help. <laughs> I very much doubt that if God knows anything of the sort, Mrs Manningham. Had he done so, I believe he would have come to your aid before this. But I am here, so you must give me a faith. Who are you? Are you a doctor? Oh, no. Nothing so learned, madam. Just a plain police detective. A police detective? Yes. Or was, ten years ago. At any rate, still detective enough to see that you've been interrupted in your tea. Couldn't you start again and let me have a cup? <laughs> yes, sir. I will give you a cup. Thank you. It only wants water. Now, madam, have you ever heard of the celebrated Sergeant Ruff? Sergeant Ruff who solved the Claudesley Diamond case? Sergeant Ruff who hunted down the Camberwell dogs? Sergeant Ruff, who brought Sandham himself to justice. Or were all such sensations before your time? Sandham? Why, yes, I have heard of Sandham. The murderer. The throttler. Yes, Sandham the throttler. And you are now looking at the man who gave Sandham <coughs> to the man who throttled him. And that was the Captain Common Hangman. You have, in fact, in front of you one who was quite a person in his day, believe it or not. I quite believe it. Won't you sit down? I'm afraid it won't be very hot. Thank you. How long have you been married, Mr. Manning? Seven years and a little. And uh, where have you lived during all of that time, Miss Manning? Why, first we went abroad, <coughs> then we lived in Yorkshire, and then six months ago my husband took this house. Does your husband always leave you alone like this in the evening? Yes, he goes to his club, I believe, and does business. And uh, does your husband give you a free run of the whole house while he's out? Yes. Well, no, not the top floor. Why do you ask? Before I go any further, Mr Manningham, I must tell you there is a linkage in this house. You have a maid called Nancy? Yes. Nancy walks out in the evening with a young man named Booker in my employ. I only live a few streets away from you, you know. Oh, yes. Well. There is hardly anything which goes on in this house which is not described in detail to Booker, but from that quarter it reaches me. I knew it. I knew she talked. And now that I know it, she shall be dismissed. Oh, no, no. No such retribution shall accompany her at this moment, Mrs Manning. As a matter of fact, I fancy you're going to be heavily in debt to your mate, Nancy. If it were not for her indiscretions, I should not be here now, should I? What do you mean? What is this mystery? You can't keep me in the dark. What is it? Well, I'm afraid I shall have to keep you in the dark for a little, Mrs Manning, as I am 
still quite far down in the dark myself. May I have some sugar with this? Yes. Thank you. Um, <coughs> we were talking about the top floor. Now, there is a bedroom above this, and above that again is the top floor. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And uh, have you ever been up to that top floor? No, it's shut up. My husband has forbidden it. No one goes up there. And not even a servant to dust? No. Rather funny. Yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Now, Mrs. Manning, to ask a personal question. When did you first get the notion into your head that your reason was playing you tricks? How did you know? Never mind how I know. How did it begin? I always had that dread. My mother died insane when she was quite young, when she was my age. But only in the last six months, in this house, things began to happen with which... Which are driving you mad with fear? Yes. Which are driving me mad with fear. And is it the house itself you fear? Yes, I suppose it is. I hate this house. I always did. Uh, does the top floor have anything to do with this? Yes, yes it has. How did you know? That's how all this dreadful horror began. Well, why don't you tell me first how you knew this, Mary? It's when I'm alone at night. I get the idea that someone's walking about up there. Up there, at night when my husband's out. I hear noises from my bedroom, but I'm too afraid to go up. Has it ever occurred to you that... Well, I, I'm afraid to tell my husband because he gets angry. He tells me I imagine things which don't exist. Have you ever occurred to you that it might be your husband up there walking about? Yes, that is what I thought. I thought I must be mad. Tell me how you knew. Well, why don't you first tell me how you knew, Mrs. Manning? It's true then. I knew it. When he leaves this house, he comes back. He comes back and walks up there above, up and down, up and down. He comes back like a ghost. How does he get up there? Well, that's what we're going to find out, Mrs. Manning. But there are such commonplace resources as roofs and fire escapes, you know. Now, please, don't look so frightened. Your husband is no ghost, believe me, and you are very far from that. Now, tell me, that's not the only thing that has caused you to doubt your reason lately, is it? No, there are other things. It sounds so incredible. This has been going on for so long. It seems that my mind and memory are beginning to play me tricks. Tricks? What sort of tricks? When? Incessantly. But more and more of late. He gives me things to look after. And then when he asks for them, they have vanished and can never be found. And then he misses his keys, his rings or his razors. And I will hunt the place for them. And he will find them hidden at the bottom of my workbox. Twice that door has been found locked with the key hidden. That too was found in my box. And only today, before you arrived, that picture had been taken from its place and hidden. Who could have done it but myself? I tried to remember. I break my heart trying to remember. But I can't. And then there was the horrible business about the dog. The dog? <coughs> we have a little dog. A few weeks ago, it was found with its paw, but he believes. Oh God, how can I tell you what he believes? That I hurt the dog. He won't let me near it now. He keeps it locked in the kitchen and I'm not allowed to see it. I begin to doubt, don't you see? I begin to think that I imagine everything. Perhaps I do. Is this a dream too? Are you really here? I'm afraid they're going to lock me up. You know, Mrs. Manning, it has occurred to me that you'd be all the better for a little medicine. Medicine? Are you a doctor? Oh, no. You're not a doctor. I, I, no, I'm not a doctor. 
But that doesn't mean that your medicine would do you any harm. I have medicine. He makes me take it. It does me no good and I hate it. How can medicine help a mind that is ill? Oh, the mind's an exceptional medicine. I have some with me now. You must try it. What medicine is it? You shall sample it and see. You see, it has been employed by humanity for several ages for the purpose of the instantaneous removal of dark fears and doubt. That seems to fit you, doesn't it? Removal of doubt? How can a medicine affect that? Oh, that we don't know. The fact remains that it does. Here we are. See, it comes from Scotland. <laughs> now, madam, do you happen to have uh, something like two glasses or two cups about? Why, are you going to have some too? Oh, yes. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to have some above all things. We could use these cups if you like. No, I'll get you some glasses. Oh, Thank Inspector, it's, it's been so horrible. Ah. I always think that he's leaving. The lights, the gas lights, they, they go down and then they come back up. I'm so glad that I can tell this to someone at last. Well, you can tell me just as easily over here, can't you? All right. Now, we shan't be long. Now, you were talking about the gas light? Yes. It's when I'm alone at night. I, oh, he leaves. And I get the feeling that something's going to happen. And it's always ten minutes after he leaves. I find myself waiting for something. And then all at once, I look around the room. And I see the lights are slowly going down. First I tried not to notice it, but after a time it began to get on my nerves. I'd go all over the house to see if someone had put on an extra light, but they never had. That's what made me think somehow he had come back. It was he who was walking about up there. I go up to my bedroom, but I dare stay because I hear noises overhead. I want to scream and run out of the house. I lay here for hours, terrified, waiting for him to come back. But I always know when he's coming back again. Suddenly the lights go on. And I hear his key in the lock downstairs. And he's back again. That's what makes me think it's him. You know, Mrs. Manning, you should have been a policeman. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? Do you think I imagine everything too? No, no. I, I, I think you've made a very remarkable discovery and one which might have very far-reaching consequences. Not only think you're right on some positions. Far-reaching? Well, let's leave it for now. Here. Now... This will make me feel better. Yes. Don't... Do you mean to say you've never tasted good Scotch whiskey, Mr. Manning? <laughs> whiskey? But I mustn't take whiskey. I, I can't do that. Oh. You underestimate your powers, Mrs. Manning. You see, I don't want you to have... I don't want you to uh, distrust your reason. This will give you faith in your reason like nothing on it. Go on. Here's your very good health. There. Is it so nasty? No. I rather like it. My mother used to give us this as children that we had the fever. Oh, well, then you're a hard whiskey. <laughs> but you'll enjoy it better sitting down, won't you? Yes. Now, Mrs. Manning, have you ever heard of the Cabman's friend? The cabman's friend? Yes. Cabman's friend. Who was the cabman's friend? She was an old lady who died many, many years ago. An old lady years ago? What has she to do with me? A great deal, I fancy, if you will follow me patiently. Her name was Barlow, Alice Barlow, and she was an old lady of great wealth and decided eccentricities. In fact, her principal mania in life was the protection of cabmen. You may think that an extraordinary hobby, but in the right way, she did a world of good. She provided those men with pensions, clothing, housing, and that was her little contribution to the sum of the world's happiness, or rather, her little stand is the sum of the world's pain. There is a great deal of work, pain in this world, as many of you know. Well, it was not my privilege to know her, but it was my duty on just one occasion to see her. And that was when her throat was cut open and she lay dead on the floor of her own house. 
Oh, how horrible. Do you mean she was murdered? Yes, she was murdered. I was only a comparatively young officer at the time, but made it extremely horrible. In fact, I may say lasting impression. The murderer was never discovered, but the motive was obvious enough. Barlow rubies had been inherited by her and it was well known that she kept them without any proper precautions in the bedroom on the upper floor. She lived alone except for a deaf servant in the basement. Well, for that she paid the penalty of her life. But what? There were some sensational features about the case, Mrs. Manning. The man seemed to have got in about 10 at night and stayed to the dorm. Apart presumably from the jewels, there was only a few trinkets taken. The whole house had been turned upside down. And in the upper room, every single thing had been flung about or torn open. Even the cushions of the chairs had been ripped open with this bloody knife. The police decided it must have been a revengeful maniac as well as a robber. But I had other theories. What were your theories? Well, it seemed to me from all that I gathered here and there that the old lady might have been an eccentric, but she was very far from crazy. <coughs> it seems to me that <coughs> she might have been one too clever for that. We presume you killed her, silenced her, but what then? What if she had not been so slack? What if she'd got those jewels hidden away in some inconceivably <coughs> cunning place? In the walls, floored down, ripped in it. What if the only person that could tell, her, tell him where they were was lying dead on the floor? Would that not account for all of the strange <coughs> confusion in which the place was found, Mrs. Manning? Can't you picture him searching through the night, ransacking the place, place hour after hour, growing more and more desperate until at last the dawn comes and he has to slink out into the pale street, the blood and wreckage of the night behind, and the death servant in the basement sleeping like a log through it all? How horrible! How horrible indeed! And was the man ever found? No, the man was never found, nor has the Barlow jewellery ever come to life. Then perhaps he found it after all, and is alive today? Well, I think he is almost certainly still alive today, but I don't believe he found what he wanted. That is, if my theories are right. Then perhaps the jewels are, are still where the old lady hid them? Indeed, Mrs. Manning. My theory is right. The jewels must still be where she lived. But then, of course, it was only a theory and that formed it quite a young man long enough ago. The official conclusion was quite otherwise. The police naturally and quite excusably presumed that the murderer had got There was no reopening of matters in those days. Soon enough the public forgot about it. I forgot about it myself. But it would be funny, wouldn't it, Mrs. Manningham, if after all these years I should turn out to be right? Yes, yes indeed. But, but what has this to do with me? Ah, that is the whole question. What indeed? What has the obscure murder of an old lady 20 years ago to do with a, an attractive, though I am afraid at present quite pale, and one young lady in this house who believes she is going out of her mind and watches the gaslight going up and down when her husband is out at night? Well, I believe there is a link, however remote, wild and strange it may be, and that is why I'm here. It's all so confusing. Why don't you just tell me what you... Do you conceive it possible that that man may not have given up hope of getting at the treasure which lay there, and that biding his time until he could re-enter the house somehow? Yes, yes. Can possibly. you conceive that he may have waited years, five years, mm -hmm. ten years, fifteen years, twenty years even? Until, during which time you may have gone and done many things, gone abroad, got married even, until at last this chance came to resume the search we've done on that terrible night. You're not following where I'm leading at all, are you? <laughs> Follow you. you know yes, old, I think so. You know the old theory that the criminal always returns to the scene of his crime? Yes. Now, in this case, there is something more than mere morbid compulsion. There is treasure there to be under. If only he can search again, search methodically, without fear of interruption, without causing suspicion. How would he do that, Mr. Manning? 
Don't you think? What's the matter, Mr. Manning? Quiet. Be quiet. He's come back. Look. Look at the light. It's going down. Wait. Dear me. Yes. There. Wait. He's come back. You see, he's upstairs now. How dark it is. You can hardly see the room. He's come back, I tell you. You must go. He's in the house. He will know that you are here. You must go. Quiet. Quiet. Got to keep your head. Don't you see my meaning yet? Don't you understand that this was the house? House? What house? A <laughs> woman's house. <laughs> this house here. These rooms. These walls. Twenty years ago, Alice Barlow lay dead in this room. Twenty years ago, the man who murdered her ransacked this house, below and above, but could not find what he sought. What if he is still searching, Mr. Man? What if he is up there, still searching? No, my husband. My husband is up there. Precisely that, Mr. Man, your husband. See, I'm afraid you are married to a tolerably dangerous gentleman. And drink that quickly, as we have a great deal to do. <laughs> How do you know that this was the house? Why are you got us on the case, Mrs. Manning? And I came here myself. The idea is mad. Mad! Yes, I've right. been married for seven years. How can you imagine that my husband is what you imagine him to be? Mrs. Manning, when the police yes. came into this place 20 years ago, as you can understand, there was a great deal of work to be done, interviewing of relatives and friends and so forth. Most of that was left to me. Well? Well, amongst all of the relatives and nephews and nieces, etc., that ended, there had to be a young man by the name of Sidney Powell. I suppose that name you've never heard before, have you? Powell? Yes, Sidney Powell. The name means, conveys nothing to you. Sidney Powell, no. Well, he was a kind of distant cousin, apparently, quite attached to the old lady, even assisting her in her good works. The only thing was that I remember his face. Well, about five weeks ago, I saw that face again. It took me a whole day to discover where I'd seen it before, but I remembered it at last. What of it? What have you remembered him? Well, it's not so much my remembering Mr. Sidney Town, Mrs. Manning. What started me was the lady on his arm and the locality in which I saw it. Oh. Who was the lady on his arm? You were the lady on his arm, Mrs. Manning. <laughs> and you were walking down this street. Are you saying that you believe my husband, my husband is this Mr. Power? Well, not exactly. So if you what are you saying? You stand there talking in riddles. You are so cold. You're as cold and heartless as he is. Mrs. Manningham, I am not cold and I'm not talking riddles. Just trying to preserve cold and calculating tone because you are up against the most awful moment in your life. Your whole future depends upon what you're going to do in the next hour, nothing less. You have got to strike for your freedom, strike now, for the moment may not come again. Strike! You are not going out of your mind, Mr. Manning, and you are slowly, methodically, systematically being driven out of your mind. So why? Because you are married to a criminal maniac who is afraid you are beginning to know too much. A criminal maniac who steals back into his own house at night, still searching for something he could not find 20 years ago. Those are the facts, wild and incredible as they may have seen. His name is no more Manning than the mine is. He is Sidney Power, and he killed Alice Barlow in this room. He changed his name, and he's waited all these years till he could find it safe to acquire this house in a legal way. He then acquired the empty house next door. Every night for the last few weeks, he's gone into the back of that house, climbed up onto its roof, and got into this house, by the skyline. I know that because I've seen him do it. <coughs> what is the gas like? Been aware of the same thing. He is up there now. Why he should employ this mad, secretive, circuitous way of getting at what he wants? Got himself on the numbers. For the same reason, perhaps, he employs this mad, secretive, circuitous way of getting rid of you. He is by driving you slowly insane, sending you to an insane asylum. Thank God you are not married to him and that I have come to save you from working with a wicked mind. Not married? Not ma he married me! I have no doubt he did. Unfortunately, 
Well, rather fortunately, <laughs> he contracted the same sort of union with another lady several years before he met you. And moreover, that lady is still alive. And the English law has highly exacting taste in monogamy. See, I've been finding things out of it in the city power. Are you telling the truth? My God, are you telling the truth? Where is his wife now? Well, if my guesses are right, she's the length of the world away on the continent of Australia, to be precise. That's where I know for a fact he spent five years. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Yes. If only I could find her, everything would be easier. And that's the whole root of the matter. So far, I'm only dealing in guesses and half facts. I've got to have evidence, and that's why I came to see you. You've got to give me the evidence or help me find her. But this is my husband, don't you understand? This is my husband. Do you ask me to betray the man who married me? By which you mean, of course, the man who betrayed you into thinking you are married, <laughs> don't you? But I'm married to him. You must go. I must think this out. You must go. I must cling to the man that I married. Indeed. Must I? Cling to him if you desire. But do not imagine you are the only piece of ivory. You can cling to him if you wish, as his fancy women cling to him in the low resorts of the town. That is the sort of man you have to cling to, man. Women, what are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything, I'm just telling you what I've seen. I've made it my business to follow him on some of his less serious excursions, and I can promise you, he has a taste in unemployed actresses which he has at no pains to conceal. Is this the truth? Are you telling me the truth? Mrs. Manning, will you look me in the eyes again and see if you think I am telling you the truth? Yes, I've known it. How strange that is. I've known it all along. Mrs. Manning, I mean, it is hard to take everything from me. But you are no more tied to this man. You are under no more obligation to him than those wretched women in those places. You must learn to be thankful for that. What do you want me to do? What do you want? I want his papers, Mr. Manning, and his identity. There is some clue somewhere in this house, and we have got to get out of here. Where does he keep his papers? Papers? I know of no papers. Unless his bureau. Yes, his bureau. Yes, there. But his bureau? But he keeps it always locked. I've never seen it open. Oh, he keeps it always locked, does he? Yes, it's just his desk. Very well, we will have a look inside. <laughs> but it is locked. How can you if it is locked? Oh, Mrs. Manning, it doesn't look so formidable. You know, one of the greatest regrets of my life was that fate never made me one of two things. One was a gardener, the other was a burglar. <laughs> As for the last, if I started young and worked my way up, I should have been a genius. But you must not touch look. this. He will know what you have done. You, now you're working with me, aren't you, Mrs. Manning? Not against me? Come on. All right, now do you mind if I take off my coat? I'm a man who never feels a work until his coat's off. Quite a saucy shirt, don't you think? <laughs> you didn't suspect I was such a dandy, did you? All right, now let's have a look at this. But you must not tamper with that. He will know what you have done. They are not if we're clever enough, Mrs. Manning. You know, there are Stop. all manner of... Stop talking. Haven't you noticed? No. Haven't you noticed something? You just sat down. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was right, can't you see? The light has come back. The light? He's come back. Well, bless my soul. This looks as if the unexpected has ended him. And their plans are going wrong. He always does the unexpected. I never know what he's going to do. Now, Mrs. Manning, will we grab that bell and uh, call for Elizabeth, please? Elizabeth? Why do you want her? Just do as I say and ring the bell, please. Quickly, at once. <laughs> well, what am I going to say when he comes back? Why do you want Elizabeth? All in good time, Mrs. Manning, and he's not going to jump through the window, you know. <laughs> in fact, he can't be around at our front door in less than five minutes, unless he's a magician. Now, can you see anything I've missed? No. 
Yes, the whiskey. Oh, yeah. See, I told you you could have been a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the glasses. Oh, yes, don't forget the glasses. All right. Ah, Elizabeth, come here, will you? Yes, sir. Now, Elizabeth, you and I have got to do some quite calm, but rather quick thinking. Are you anxious to help your mistress, Elizabeth? Why, yes, sir. I told you I was, sir. But what's the whole Are you anxious to help your mistress blindly without asking any questions? Yes, sir, but, but you see... Come now, are you or are you not? Yes, sir. Good. Now, Elizabeth, Mrs Manningham and I have reason to suppose that in about five minutes' time, the master will be returning to this house. I do not think it advisable to leave the place at the moment, as I might be seen doing so by the master. Would you be good enough to take me down to your kitchen and hide me away for a short space of time? You can put me in the oven if you like. He <laughs> <laughs> must go. You must go. He, he won't see you if you go now. What were you saying, Elizabeth? Yes, sir. You could go down to the kitchen, sir, but Nancy's there. Nancy? Sir. What the devil is this? I thought this was Nancy's afternoon off. <laughs> was it not arranged that I should come when Nancy was away? Yes, sir. But somehow she stayed on. I think she's got a young man. And I couldn't make her go, could I, sir? Right. If I'd have done that... I'd... All right. Then she was here when I came and she knows I'm here. Is that it? No, sir. When I answered the door, she was in the scullery. And I said it was a man who'd come to the wrong house. She, she right. doesn't know, sir. All right. That's better news. But it means she can't entertain me in the kitchen. Now, Elizabeth, where are you going to hide me? <laughs> I don't Quickly know. now. I, I don't know, sir. I, I, unless you come to the bedroom, mine and Nancy's. That sounds altogether entrancing. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go there now? Yes, sir, but supposing Nancy goes up there oh. before she goes out. You think of everything, Elizabeth, and you're a good soul. Now, where does this lead to, and what's the matter with this? It's his dressing room, sir, where he keeps his clothes, sir. Yes, sir. Go in there, sir. He won't find you in there. There's a big wardrobe at the back, sir. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth! It's all right, ma'am. Don't take on so, ma'am. It's all right. It'll be all right. I'm sure he ought to go. No, ma'am. He knows best. He's bound to know best. A perfect accommodation. Yes, there he is. Now we really have got to hurry. Mrs. Manning, get off the bed. Quickly now. Elizabeth, you go to your room. You can't get down the stairs in time. Hurry, please. Elizabeth, turn down that lamp. To bed? Am I to go to bed? Yes, quickly. He's coming. Don't you understand? Go there and stay there. Take her, Elizabeth. Can you take her, please? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.